Hello, it's Open into D100 again. Today we're going to be talking about panels. This is the second video in this Sandbox for Foundry VTT tutorial series. Last time we covered tabs and panels and properties and templates. Uh, this time we get a little more in depth with panels. Panels are one of the most powerful tools you have to create a good looking character sheet and it's best to understand how they work to save yourself a lot of frustration. I've already created a template with three tabs, cascading multi-panel and combo panel. They're empty. <laughs> They're right here. Now uh, I went ahead and created four panels, panel one through four. So I'll show you how panels work in the cascading window here. We'll take the cascading tab because remember tabs go into sheets panels going to tabs. Put them in the order that we want them in. Three, four. Four panels. Let's rebuild this sheet. And now you see we have four panels. Now you say, well, where's panel three? The reason you don't see panel three is because panel three Panel three had some uh, some parameters in it. Is why you didn't see. So I was playing around with. So uh, now we see it. This is uh, the way panels cascade onto a form. Each one of these is a half width panel. Half width. Some are one column. Some are two. Uh, but they're each half width and the way it lays out panels is horizontally on a line and then it, it cascades or character turns to the next horizontal line and continues down the page panel one is half a page panel two is half a page it drops down puts panel three and then it puts panel four so you have to understand this in order to get a sheet, a pre-existing sheet that you want to look like a pre-existing sheet, you have to understand this. This is how you can't just put a panel four over here or panel three over here. Or panel. This is how they want it wants to cascade down the page. If we put panel one and made panel one a whole column, it's Panel one is now fills the entire horizontal row. Panel two will cascade to the second line and fill three horizontally and then four. This is the behavior that it wants to do. If we went into each panel and changed the panels to one fourth you can imagine what's going to happen. We have all four panels side by side because they are all laid out in one quarter of the width of this horizontal space. That's how panels cascade. So let's go back to Let's turn the panels back to, to, to halves. And then let's give them some information. Okay. So let's go into our properties. We've got some properties made up. So remember panel tabs going to character sheets, panels going to tabs, properties going to panels. So in panel one, let's put background and charisma. Panel two, let's put height. And panel three, let's put notes and race. Correction, let's put race and sex. And then in panel four, let's put notes. Okay. 
and this is how properties fill out the panels. Now these were one column wide panels, so the, the property fills the entire width of the panel, both one and two. Panel three was a two panel, a two column panel, it, so it it fills out. If you had a third parameter here, it would also, inside the panel, drop down, cascade to the next row, and continue to fill horizontally, two, and then drop down to the next. One, they'll continue to just place underneath each other. This is a notes panel. With no label, so it doesn't have notes out here, it's just a note panel. If you had the label, it would push the notes panel off outside the, the window here. So the note, the label was taken off to make this fit. Now let's say you don't want panel three. You want panel one to look like it has single columns and double columns. How can you, how can you achieve this? Well, one way would be to go into your panels to panel three and take away its header. Now panel three doesn't have a title. And now, <clears throat> now panel one appears that it has a uh, different formatting when really it's not. It's just panel three no longer has a header. This still behaves as panel three. If we continue to add properties, they'll still double column in this area, but to the rest of the, to the bottom of the page. Same with panel one. If we had a panel one, they'll still take up the entire width as they push other stuff down. Now say we created a fifth panel. You should know by now, based on the information given already, what's gonna happen if we add a fifth panel. Give panel five a name, so okay, yeah, of course it's not going to work. I got to add panel five to my my tabs. I'm about to uh, pull my hair out for no reason. Okay, and there we have it. Panel 5 has cascaded to below panel 4. And you can see through this, if you wanted this to be invisible and fall in line with these, you would need to make sure that panel 3 didn't have a correction, panel 4. Panel 4 didn't have the uh, this big box taking space. Then we could take 5, uh, take away its header, reload that, and that's going to give us our look. And look, now it appears panel 1 has some 2 columns, 1 columns, 2 columns, and 3 columns when really it's three separate panels. The, the problem is going to be if you put five is technically here. If you put in a six, it's going to appear over here. Uh, so you have to uh, be real careful with the uh, Put your head around how you want things to cascade to create create the form you want it to look. But there's an easier easier method. Of course, <laughs> it's called multi panels. So let me show them to you. So we'll go back into panels. Let's create a a multi panel. going to be property multi-panel. Okay. Now, you have to think of multi-panels like tabs when it comes to subordinate panels. Just like a P 
panel will go into a tab. Multi panels are are panels that go into tabs. Say our multi panel tab, we would need to put our multi panel tab into. It's a panel in the tab, but it's a multi panel. Now anything we put inside this multi panel will need to be if we want it to show inside the multi-panel it needs to be placed inside the multi-panel instead of the tab. I'll show you that. <laughs> now multi-panels have the same width control so let's make it half. Uh, we need a key. Let's give it a, we're not going to give it a title because we don't want our, we don't want a header on our multi-panel. Okay. <clears throat> so we go to our multi-panel, let's delete this out and re-add it just since we changed it. Okay. Now let's create a panel. Uh, we, we can probably use these same panels. Let me uh, take our multi-panel and let's put our panels in here. And let's rebuild the sheet. Okay, now as you see we've got our multi-panels it's a half width wide as we've told it it doesn't have you don't see the multi panel because we we didn't uh, we didn't put anything it's in its title otherwise there would be a black bar up here for whatever you wanted the panel to be and it'd be a little bit wider slightly wider than these but this is your multi panel we've got panel one's information we got panel two information we got panel three remember panel three is invisible because we we didn't put anything in its header and then we have panel four and this is how you can lay out a certain part of the sheet without having to fight the cascading effect of those panels. Now if we created a second multi-panel Let's give this a header just to just to show you what a header looks like. Also going to be half a width. Okay. And now in this this multi panel, uh, let's put fan panel five. Let's copy. So I need to get these out of here. All right. We'll go on and go with panel five. Okay. things went sideways. Oh, Duft once again forgot the rule of adding the panel to the panels. So when in doubt check your links. Make sure your panels are in your tabs, your properties in your panels, your tabs are in your property sheet. That's typically where you make mistakes. And here's our multi panel. We got panel one, panel two, panel three, four, and then here's five with its from its four parameters that were already inside of it over here. This one, same one. <clears throat> and that's that that new panel cascaded to the right like it, it wants to be in this horizontal line. If we dropped in another panel, a multi-panel, it would fall down here to below panel 4 because that's where 6 would go. This is 5. So even with multi-panels you have to understand how it wants to place the these headers of panels. 
So you would want to create, if you wanted six to be down here, you would want to make sure that you filled up five uh, with either blank headers. You'd want to fill this information, this box to the point that it would, well, it just, let me just show you what it does. put that in multi is don't we're not going to put it in a multi panel too we're going to put it in well if I've got ahead of myself if we put panel six in multi panel two then yes it will go underneath it because it's that's the purpose of multi panels so obviously there's a renaming issue Oh, I didn't give it a title. That's why we're not seeing it. There. So, panel one, panel two, panel three, panel four, second multi panel and then panel six. So if you put another header in here, it would also, it would appear below here if you put it in this multi-panel. Now what happens if you put a, a panel in here that's not one of these panels, which is what the combo panel was for, but we can show it in here just as easy rather than rebuilding this setup. If we went with the current setup and we added another panel, let's create just a standard panel. It's not a multi panel, it's just a panel. Same width, columns, and then let's add that panel to, this needs to be added to the table. So we'll add this panel straight to the panels. And as you see it fell cascaded down to the next spot that was available which is below this multi-panel so if you continue to add stuff to this multi-panel it would push this panel down the page if you added another panel or even a multi-panel it will place it to the right in this line here and continue to behave in that that same manner and that about sums up the behavior of panels. As you can see, they're, they're powerful in the creation of form, but you really have to understand how you want your form to look and understand how the panel wants to behave when it's placed to get the look that you want. In general, it's easier to create a character sheet uh, freeform without trying to follow another character sheet even if you uh, have to change it somewhat than it is to try to mimic exactly another character sheet that's already has a standard format if you were creating your own system and you were building your own character sheet this would be super easy because it wouldn't matter the format but if you're trying to build a Warhammer fantasy character sheet where you want skills on one side you want to uh, your, you know, your items and your, the, you know, your 
your demographics in a certain area it's to to look like a sheet that's already created you're going to pull a lot of hair out trying to get it to, you can get it to work but you really have to work with your spacings and your sizes now that they've added the ability to drop images in that that could be a way to help take up free space but we'll have to we'll have to see with that but, but hopefully you've learned something about panels and uh, that'll do it for this video we'll see you in the next video